Today we're going to bring everything about exponential functions together and talk about multiple representations. Multiple representations. And you can title that for page 136 in your notebook. Once again, 136 is where you're going to take this first set of notes. Sorry, it keeps getting my uh, toolbar at the top when I go too high. Okay, multiple representations, page 136. So we've been looking at y equals a times b to the x. When we've talked about a word problem, I'll just abbreviate that, a is your initial value, and b is your growth or decay factor. And we have to remember change the percentage to a decimal, add it to one, or subtract it from one. Now we're going to talk about what this shows up on my graph. On my graph, if I'm not adding anything extra, a is my y-intercept. B tells me whether it's increasing or decreasing and how fast. It has to do with how spread out my points are. In a table, if I have my x and my y's, and remember we could do vertical, a vertical orientation as well, but this is what's going to fit. Um, my A shows up as my y-intercept, so I have a point zero A, and then my B shows up as what I'm multiplying by each time. So I multiply by B as I go between my different Y values. And the last thing I want to mention is a next now equation. And next now, it would be next equals B times now. And it's going to be starting at A. Okay, so organize that however you want on page 136. And now we're going to look at some examples of how we can kind of piece all this together. And as we go through it, you'll kind of remember we did this with linear functions, so now we're doing it with exponential. So in this case, they've given me an equation. That's what I have been given to start with. And remember, we can go in really any order we want. But I'm going to start with identifying my multiplier and my y-intercept. So remember this, a, I said is going to be my y-intercept, my initial value. So I'm going to write that down as 6. And then my base is my multiplier, 1 third. So since I know my y-intercept is 6, I can start my table at 0. 6. After no time has passed, I have 6 units. Then after 1 hour or day, whatever we're using, I'm going to divide that by 3, multiply it by a third. And let me do that in red. So if I multiply by a third, a third of 6 would give me 2, and then a third of that would be 2 thirds, and then a third of that would be 2 ninths. Okay, so all I did is multiply my initial value by 1 third, or I'm dividing it by 3. We can talk about a sequence at as well. So my initial value is still 6. After my first term, I have 2, and then I have 2 thirds, and then I have 2 ninths, and then I would have 2 over 27. We're getting really close to 0 there. So once again, we're either multiplying by 1 third or dividing by 3. 
So we can write a next now statement. Next equals one third one third of what I have now and I'm starting at six. Starting at six. On my graph, I can graph my y-intercept, six. Then we said after one day, I'll have two. And then after two days or two hours, I'll have two thirds, so that's almost one. Two ninths is closer to zero though. So my curve going through these points would be approximately that. And it's a decay which makes sense. So now if I write my situation in terms of my flowers, it would be that I started with six flowers, and maybe it's flower beds that would be a little more optimistic. Six flowers and the number alive decreased by one-third. Every day, every hour, every hour will be kind of sad. Let's say every day. And last but not least, we're going to connect this to practical domain and practical range. Remember, domain has to do with my x values and range has to do with my y. So what makes sense for me to talk about in terms of inputting numbers? Well, x has to do with time, so it would only make sense for my x to be greater than or equal to zero. I wouldn't talk about negative time. Likewise, with my range, I'm starting at six. So there's not really a way for me to get less than six, but I'm also not gonna have negative flowers. So that means that my y needs to be in between six and zero. In between six and zero. Okay, let's look at one where we're given something different. So if I look at my piece of paper, the only thing I've been given here is my table. So that's where I need to start. I think I'll start with writing my equation. So I have y equals, I need my a, which remember is my y-intercept in my table. So that would be, whoops, wrong color, 100. So I'll go ahead and fill in my y-intercept part. Okay, and now I need to find my multiplier. Let's talk about how to do this. So if I want to say what do I multiply to these two numbers to get from the first to the next, what I need to do is divide. And let's look at that. 105 divided by 100, and I'm just doing this on my calculator, I get 100, or 1 1.05. And if I do 110.25 divided by 105, I also get 1.05. So that means that my base is 1.05. What I'm multiplying each time is 1.05. So my multiplier, once again, is 1.05. And I'm going to raise that to the x in my equation. So that means my initial value would be 100. And then the rest of the sequence I'm really just getting from my table. 105. 110.25, 115.76, 
And then I need to multiply that by 1.05. So let's type that in. And I got 121.05. A next now statement would be, I get what I have next by taking what I have now and multiplying it by one point, whoop, go back down, one point zero five times what I have now, and I am going to start at 100. Okay, now I want to look at my situation. So my situation is a savings account. So what does an initial value mean in terms of a saving account? It means I have or I deposited, deposited $100 in an account that pays some percentage interest. So looking at my base, if I have 1.05, how far is that from a dollar? It is five cents from a dollar. So that means I am paying or getting paid 5% interest. All right, so now I've found all of those things and everything except for my graph. So let's graph it. My y-intercept is 100. After one year, I have 105, so that's not really too much more than 100, about there. After two years, I have 110, so that's about halfway between those. Three, I have 115, so getting even closer. And then 121 is about there. So it almost looks linear just because my rate of growth is so slow at that point. Okay, that's why we want to invest more than $100. And last, I have my practical domain and my practical range. So practical domain would be making sense for x, which is time, which means it needs to be x is greater than or equal to zero. Practical range means what makes sense for me to be getting out. So if I look, I'm starting at 100. I'm never going to get anything less than 100. So that would make sense to be y is greater than or equal to 100. Okay, go back and make sure that you've underlined what you need to, you've done any color coding you need to, and be ready to do more practice tomorrow.